The thing that has prevented a world war since 1945 has been nuclear weapons, or rather a doctrine concerning their use called MAD, Mutually Assured Destruction. You fire yours, I fire mine, everybody dies. So it's no surprise that NATO has been keen to avoid a direct military showdown with Russia over Ukraine, because conventional war could relatively easily turn to nuclear war, and nobody wants that, because no one wins. Or do they? It appears that Russia has been very busy over the past decade or so developing a weapon that might render the old power balance, well, unbalanced. We all know that Russia, like the United States, has plenty of nuclear weapons. Russia's stockpile is believed to be around 5,500 to 6,000 warheads. Britain, by contrast, has just 225. Like the United States, Russia deploys nuclear weapons in three ways. From nuclear fields, that is buried silos on land, by submarine, currently the only deployment used by Britain, or launch from aircraft. These three delivery systems are known as the nuclear triad and underpin the MAD theory. Until recently, both the Russian and the American silo-based ICBMs were old 1960s and 70s designs, upgraded Cold War relics. In the case of America, it's the Minuteman III, and for the Russians, the R-36M2, known in the West as the Satan I. The R-36M2, ironically a product of the old Ukrainian Soviet Socialist Republic, can deliver ten multiple independently targetable re-entry vehicles, each with a yield of 550 to 750 kilotons. By comparison, the atomic bomb the Americans dropped on Hiroshima in 1945 was 15 kilotons. Or the Satan I can carry a single nuclear warhead of up to 20 megatons to a range of 11,000 kilometers. In comparison, the US Minuteman III, in service since 1970, has an operational range of 9,600 kilometers, or 6,000 miles, and can deliver three warheads, each with a yield of 475 kilotons. But a new development has been worrying the US military and defense analysts all over the world for some years now. In 2018, President Vladimir Putin famously announced a great fanfare, the creation of a massive new ICBM that he said was, quote, invincible, end quote. The RS-28 Sarmat, known in the West as the Satan II. And today, it's already operational, beginning to phase out the old Satan ones. So what is worrying about Sarmat? Sarmat is a liquid-fueled, multiple independently targetable vehicle-equipped, super-heavy ballistic missile. Each carries around 10 nuclear warheads, each warhead having a yield of 750 kilotons. It can also carry up to 24 hypersonic boost glide vehicles, enabling conventional strikes as well as nuclear onto multiple targets. So, Sarmat has, by some estimates, a destructive yield greater than 35 times that of the American Minuteman III missile. Sarmat's range is enormous. Satan I could manage 11,000 kilometers, while Sarmat can make 18,000, or 11,000 miles. What's got analysts worried is Sarmat's range enables the missile to approach North America via the North or South Poles. Sarmat also has a short boost phase after launch, which gives NATO less time to track it by satellite using infrared sensors, and making it more difficult to intercept. By flying unpredictable routes, Sarmat can perhaps avoid US anti-ballistic missile defense systems, which are still basically in the testing stage. Secondly, even if anti-ballistic missiles were launched, Sarmat's advanced guidance systems and probable countermeasures are designed to trick anti-missile systems. The missile may also have lightweight decoys to draw off kill vehicles from the deadly target. Further, it's been suggested that the launch silos in Russia are defended by an active protection system designed to kinetically destroy incoming weapons, be they bombs, cruise missiles, or ICBMs, up to a range of 6 kilometers altitude, which removes the US first strike capability against Russian silo fields. As I mentioned, US anti-ballistic missile technology is still in the testing stage, 
and America has been concentrating very much on the threat posed by a possible North Korean ICBM strike, and the Sarmat threat may speed things along in this field. The missile's ability to fly unpredictable routes due to its increased range is a direct threat to NATO, and its defensive systems may make its warheads very difficult to intercept and destroy, not to mention the hypersonic boost glide vehicles it can also carry. It is noted that Russia expects to have replaced all of its aging Satan ones with Sarmats by 2027. Of course, the nuclear triad ensures that some element of the MAD doctrine remains, primarily submarine-launched nuclear missiles, the submarines being very difficult to locate compared with static land-based missiles. But it also seems that Putin is taking the lead in increasing Russia's capability. Are we entering a new arms race after decades of reducing the numbers of nuclear warheads in the world and defence spending more generally? Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and share, and also visit my audiobook channel, War Stories with Mark Felton. You can also help to support both of my channels at PayPal and Patreon. Details in the description box below.